we met at an appearance, and he had just recently uh, lost his son, Reed. Oh, yeah. And so he knew that I was friends with, like, four or five other guys. It was a Rome, Georgia appearance, the, like a fan fest thing over there. So he knew me or knew of me through this guy or that guy or whatever. So anyway, we wind up exchanging numbers, and we watch playoff basketball together, and we watch the draft together. So we just started – because here's the thing if we're just being honest, Rick didn't know how to cope with losing a son. And I don't yeah. know how anyone could judge that. You no, know? not at all. But his solution was he drank too much. And it wouldn't just happen on the weekends. It would happen on a Tuesday. And so when I would just get a random call from an unknown number, I knew that would be him. And they'd say, what's going on, big man? You want to watch the draft this Thursday? And, you know, he'd use a little more colorful language than that. And I would say, yeah. And so <laughs> one of my buddies eventually said, hey, man, uh, how many times are you going to get drunk with Rick Flair? And I said, Every time. Every time. Uh, I mean, that's the answer. The answer is every time. Uh, so we just had a great time. And so then he invited me to a show uh, because at the time, you know, he was used to having an entourage. His son would tag along or his wife would tag along or whatever. But uh, Wendy had small kids who were in school, so she couldn't just leave to go to a Monday Night Raw. So he would say, hey, man, you want to go to St. Louis and go to Monday Night Raw? And that was cool. I got to, like, see how the sausage is made and set the stage mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. And that was just so – Anyway, we did enough of that to where he saw me have to do live radio in the morning or afternoon because I would do like live radio spots to sell mortgages. So he would ask, what were you doing there? How does that work? So we talked about it. So then we were at an appearance in Nashville, which is right up the road from where I live, but he was doing this thing called Waiting for Wishes. So you have like a celebrity waiter at the Palm Steakhouse, Mm -hmm. and obviously whatever you tip goes to charity. So... People would come in and have a hundred dollar steak, but then tip a thousand dollars because it went to St. Jude's or whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, the next morning, he says, "Hey, what's a podcast?" And I said, "What do you mean?" And he says, "Here." And he hands me his phone, and it's an email from his agent. She says, "Hey, we have an offer from CBS Radio to do a podcast. Would you be interested in exploring it?" And he says, "Can you make money with that? How do you listen to that? Can you show me on my phone?" <laughs> so I said, "Sure." So I encouraged him, and then they signed the deal. And then he called me and said, "Hey, they just want me to just talk." And I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, I don't know that I can do that. I'm like, you're the greatest talker <laughs> in the history of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and he's like, no, but I'm used to playing it off of somebody. And so what they had in mind mm-hmm. was just come in this studio, just you and a board op, and just talk. And he's like, I, I can't do that. So can you just come in and ask fan questions? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no problem. So I took it seriously, and we did. 